Hey guys, this video is going to go on our How To Do Stuff In Japan playlist and it's going to be part of our mini-series on being married to a Japanese person or what it's like to be married to a Japanese person or what it can be like to be married to a Japanese person. So in the last video, it was sort of a few generalizations. This one's going to be the same, of course. Any of the how-to videos, any of the cultural related videos, of course, are generalizations and of course, don't include everybody because not every Japanese person is the same of course and not every foreign person is the same of course so not every relationship is the same of course these are just generalizations and general observations based on what we see and often with cultural things the reason that they're generalizations is because they're generally true it's, it's just the way it is right not always true but often true and the things we're talking about in the last video are, the, are true in the majority of cases, but of course not always. So what we're going to talk about today is the same. Not always true, but quite often it is. So in the last video, just as an example of some of the difficulties, we weren't really getting into any detail in the last video. It was just sort of introduction to the topic, recommending that people don't do it, basically. But as one of the examples of the difficulties, we mentioned brief, briefly about about how cheating is considered to be sort of an accepted thing not an acceptable thing but an accepted thing that it happens it just happens and it, best not to think about it best not to talk about it let's ignore it and not mention it not talk about it and that's usually the way it's dealt with here usually and any form of jealousy or any question asking of questions or, or mini interrogations or anything like that is considered extremely uncool and the mention of that triggered a lot of comments from people who said that they couldn't deal with that or didn't like that or didn't like the sound of that at all and we actually got some private messages from people uh, who sort of went into a little bit more detail about their feelings about that and their experiences about that as well so it sort of became obvious that that had to be the topic of this video of video number two of this mini series and it's, it's probably not a bad one because it's sort of central to a lot of the things about Japanese relationships and in, in it will give examples of other aspects of the Japanese relationships as well so so what what foreigners who who have Japanese partners are often surprised by some of the things that, that, that will surprise them one of them is that before Japanese people are married quite often they're not necessarily very close they're, they're, they're often often it's surprising you'll see somebody every week you know and suddenly they'll tell you I'm engaged and it's like well I didn't even know you had a boyfriend I didn't even know you had a girlfriend and you're engaged and and quite, it's quite common for someone to spend maybe an hour or two on the weekend with somebody once a week and then suddenly they're engaged to that person and they're getting married and they're both still living at home with their parents and then they're going to get married and live together for the rest of their lives allegedly so it's quite common so they're not particularly close and they'll quite often tell you the girls will often tell you oh he's you say oh you're engaged really I didn't know you had a boyfriend what's he like uh, he has a good job and he's a hard worker and he's very kind they're usually the most important topics that's usually what they mention and oh, and there's a lady I'm thinking of at the moment who is quite a funny lady and I said to her does he make you laugh because she's quite into having a laugh oh not really he's not very funny she said so but he had a good job and he works hard and he's kind to her so that that's enough sort of thing so not particularly close to start off with so after they're married that often continues which means it's quite normal for, for Japanese people to be married and for them to spend most of their free time or most of their working time obviously busy working and then most of their free time apart doing different things and and spending time with their, their friends and you see it here all the time you go to a family restaurant on a Saturday night and you'll see a table of ladies and over there you'll see a table of guys and they just live separately. And when a wedding invitation turns up to one of their friends is getting married and they get a wedding invitation, it's only for that person. So in a lot of countries, if a wedding invitation turns up uh, for somebody, usually it says them and friend, doesn't it? Or them and husband or them and wife or them and somebody. They can bring anyone they want, usually. Whereas in Japan, when a wedding invitation turns up, it's only 
money for that person. So they'll go off to weddings and they go off to all sorts of events and spend all their time with their friends. And quite often, uh, school reunion type events, quite often those wedding events can be school reunion type events because it's their old, all their old school friends. Um, quite often, just Saturday night, they'll go out to dinner with all their old school friends. And they might be 30 years old, but those group connections from school are sort of fairly important still. So, so they might be 30 years old, but they'll all go out to dinner with their old school friends, which means quite often in those old school friends are old boyfriends and girlfriends, aren't they? So imagine you're married to a Japanese person and Saturday night rolls around and they, they say, all right, I'm going and, and uh, you know, a bit of a reunion on with the old school friends, see you later, and off they go. And, and they, might not, they might not come home till the next day. Quite often it's in another city. If they've moved city from where they actually grew up, quite often it's in another city and they might say, going to a reunion tonight, uh, won't be back till tomorrow night. See ya. And then they'll turn back, at, turn up at home the next night, and so, and you say, "Oh, did you have fun?" Yeah, and that's about all you should ask. <laughs> so, this is what it's like. This is what's normal in Japan, and people here have grown up seeing friends and family and their own parents and their aunts and their uncles and everybody in their lives living like this usually. So, from a Japanese person's perspective, this is all perfectly normal. Which means, if you marry a Japanese person and you start asking them questions, hey, look, wh where did who was there last night? Was your ex-boyfriend there, or your ex-girlfriend was there, or where did you stay last night? Where did where did you stay, and who stayed there with you? And you start asking any questions like that, and it's going to make them uncomfortable, and it's going to make you look really uh, weak and clingy. A lot of the things that in some societies are considered normal, in Japanese society are considered clingy. So another example of that is, is uh, people holding hands or showing any sort of affection to each other in public is usually considered to be clingy. So, or any sort of kind comments to your partner, you know, you look beautiful or isn't my wife beautiful or anything like that in public is considered to be sort of desperate and clingy. And, and, and your Japanese partner won't like it if you do any of those things. So, the, the only way to do it, and because and if you watch the way relationships here work, the dynamics of most of the relationships, are, the way they work, the guys, and well, both of them, the guys and the girls, are very cool about all these things. So, whether it's the husband or the wife, so imagine it's the husband that goes off Saturday afternoon, he goes off and says he's going to a reunion with his old school friends and doesn't come back till Sunday night. And the wife would be the same. He'll walk in the door and she'll say, was it fun? And he'll say, yeah, it was fun. And that's probably the end of the conversation, probably. And she won't be asking any other questions or, or sort of pushing on it. If he wants to tell us some stuff that happened, oh, a funny thing happened and tell some stories, of course, that's okay. But as far as her asking questions or wanting to know, it's not going to happen. So, very early on, when I first came to Japan, I had a girlfriend at the time who went out somewhere, and I was out somewhere too. So she was going out for a weekend with her friends, or for a night with her friends. And so while she was out doing that, I went to a, a place where my friends were, it was a bar, and we're drinking, and it was, and she said she'd call me when she got home. So the plan was she was going to call when she got home, leave a message, and we are going to meet somewhere. And it was like 4 o'clock in the morning, and there was no message, and I sent her a message, didn't get an answer. And all I said, all I said was, I wonder what happened, I wonder, if, wonder, wonder where she is, because it was 4 o'clock. And the guy that I said it to laughed his head off and said to all the other guys, he's jealous, he's jealous. And they all laughed and thought it was hysterically funny. Because all I'd said was, I wonder where she is. I wonder where she is. And they all thought it was hysterically funny. And it's a, a sign of weakness and, and clinginess and not cool at all. Not cool at all. And see, the point of that is, that's how the partner sees it as well. So in some, some societies, <coughs> or some cultures, 
it would be understandable, wouldn't it? Hey, look, you know, quite happy for you to go spend time with your friends, of course, but but I'm just sort of curious as to where you're going and if your ex is going to be there. And, you know, if your ex is there, I hope you'll tell me about it or something like that. And you'd probably discuss it, won't you? And accept that a little bit of jealousy or a little bit of concern would be healthy or normal. Maybe not healthy, but normal. And, and you'd talk about it with each other so that you can sort of understand and be cool about it. Um, whereas here, you just wouldn't go down that path at all would not mention it, would not say anything about it. So you're being compared, that's the thing, whether you're a, whether you're a girl with a Japanese uh, boyfriend or husband or a, a guy with a Japanese girlfriend or wife, you're going to be held up to that standard, that Japanese standard of, of not caring, you know, not caring, not asking questions, not being interested, not, not being curious. The, the image that, 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 that they give off is that they don't, they're not interested, they haven't given it any thought, they're too busy doing their own thing and having a good time themselves. And the fact that she's gone away for the weekend or he's gone away for the weekend it just gives them an opportunity for them to go and spend time doing their thing as well. And then, you know, the, one of the people that sent, sent an email said, how do you find out or how do you, how do you stop somebody or how do, you, how do you help stop the cheating happening or how do you... Well, you really can't, but the only thing you can do is, be, is by being cool, because the problem is, if you start to show any sort of jealousy or insecurity or anything at all, I mean, in any country that's going to seem uncool, isn't it? You know, I mean, it's not, it's not cool to be jealous or insecure, is it? You know, it's not cool. But here, it's way not cool. It's way, way, way bad, because it's so rare. You know, in some, in some, most, most societies or most cultures, it's not considered cool to be insecure or, or uh, jealous or worried. But, but it's sort of understandable, and some people do that. And particularly if your partner's cheating, people go, "Oh, of course, that's horrible," you know, and and would be supportive. Here, nobody will support you if you show any sort of insecurity or jealousy or any any of those things at all. The partner won't like it, and nobody else will support it either. And if she tells other people that's what you like, they'll go, oh, oh, that's terrible. Why are you with him? And that's the problem, is you'll be compared, and you're held up to that standard. And and nothing will make your partner cheat quicker than, the, than if you show any sort of jealousy or insecurity or anything like that that's not cool, and she is going off and spending time with her Japanese ex-boyfriend, he's going to seem much more appealing, isn't he? So the answer to that person, so that person we promised we'd make a video about this. So that person who asked that question, how can you stop your partner from cheating or how can you help avoid them cheating? Well, obviously you really can't, but the only thing you can do is to make sure that your behavior is going to be attractive to them, really. Because it's, it's just the reality of it. And you, and you see that downward spiral here sometimes. I mean, you see that same downward spiral in other countries too sometimes, don't you? People get into a jealousy thing with their partner and one partner cheats and then the other partner cheats and they go down this downward spiral. Here it's here it's probably more likely to happen. <laughs> if you if if you show any sort of insecurity or any sort of paranoia or, or worry or ask any too many questions or anything like that, it, it could send them off in that direction. And the other thing is too, this is this is a disadvantage, and again, this is why in the first video, you know, the advice was don't do it. Don't get involved with a Japanese person because you're really at a disadvantage when you come from another culture. At first, it can be an advantage because you're all, like Billy Connolly used to say, you're all windswept and interesting because you're, you're from another culture and you're sort of exotic and interesting at first. But once you're married and once, once you're married, being different is not cool in Japan, usually. And again, this is generalizing, but most Japanese partners will want you to behave like other Japanese people will, pretty much, mostly. And particularly with topics like this. And even if they do understand, and this is another thing, is that quite often the mistake people make, particularly if their partners, most foreigners end up with, with Japanese people who can speak English. It's just what happens, mostly. Didn't happen to me. We only speak Japanese in my house, but quite often with foreigners they end up with Japanese people who can speak English and the mistake that can come from that is that that can trick you into thinking that because they speak English and because they sort of understand a bit about your culture that they're different from other Japanese people because they understand and quite often it's partly true 
quite often Japanese people who are interested in other cultures and, 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 and who can speak English quite often are a little bit different in their thinking than the average Japanese person. However, when it comes to these core values, now some of you guys might speak Japanese and some of you guys might understand a little bit about Japanese culture, but does that mean that you will be cool with your partner cheating and then you not asking them questions or showing any sort of jealousy? See, that's the thing. There's a big difference between being able to understand a bit of the language and a bit of the culture and between and, and actually, actually accepting those aspects of the culture inside yourself. And that's something that you come across all the time when you live in Japan long term and particularly when you're married to a Japanese person is that you're close to the heart. There's a big difference between knowing the correct way to handle chopsticks and accepting that there's a chance that your partner's actually sleeping with their ex and you're not allowed to ask them about it. And if you do ask them about it, that you're going to seem less cool and they're going to be less attracted to you and more attracted to the other person and that could push them in the other direction. So, again, somebody left a comment on the last video. Oh, you know, you didn't mention compromise. Well, yeah, of course. Any relationship with any human being, you've got to have some sort of compromise, haven't you? And even more so when you've got the cultural differences like this. And this is the deal. You just have to accept if you're going to have a Japanese partner. You, you know, you might occasionally, you, there's exceptions to this where people are able to talk about things a little bit more. But, but you can't expect that because it's really rare. It really is rare. And even when you do get a really healthy relationship here, and I'll just, I don't want to get into my own personal stuff because I never want to get into my own personal stuff, but I'll touch on this just briefly. After a, a lot of years of really hard work, um, I'm in a healthy relationship with a Japanese person, but it's been many years of hard work and loads of compromise. And you really have to, you really have to accept there's a lot of things that you'd prefer to have differently or you'd prefer to be able to deal with differently or there's a lot of things that you have to accept that you don't want to accept and it's just the deal more so than any other relationship you know of course every relationship you have with any human being you've got to compromise and accept some things maybe that you don't like real much but it's even more so in this case and particularly when you're living in their country you know you're living in Japan I mean, it's going to be the same anywhere if you marry a Japanese person and take them back to your country, they're not going to change their feelings about things just because they're in your country. You know, of course, they're still going to be, at, at, in their heart, they're still going to be the same person who thinks it's perfectly adult and normal to be able to go off and do your own thing for a couple of days without being asked any questions. That'll be in your country or in their country because it's the way they feel. And it's what they think is normal behaviour and, and that's not going to change, probably. 99.9% 99 .99 but but even more so when you live in Japan there's a lot of things that you just have to accept and that and that these things that might in our countries might seem normal when we live in Japan to, to everyone else those things that, those sort of things the example with the with the with the not asking questions and not showing any sort of <clears throat> no interest at all really you know it, how was your weekend was it good did you have fun yeah good that's it that's the end of the conversation. Unless they're going to tell you some more, unless they're going to tell you, oh, a funny thing happened, and they're going to tell you some stuff, chances are it's going to be, did you have a good time? Yeah, it was great. That's going to be it. What are we going to do for dinner tonight? Let's go to that restaurant. Yeah, okay. That's the end of the conversation about the weekend. That's the end of it, right? And and that's it. And, and there's a lot of things like this where it's everybody around you here thinks that's normal. And even if you don't think it's normal, and hey, wait, look, the outside, outside Japan, that's not normal. Well, too bad. Because in, 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 in Japan, and particularly in your relationship with that Japanese person, that's normal. And that's going to be normal, and you just have to accept it. And we're going to make more videos about this. I've already got a list, because people have been sending messages and asking questions, and there's already a list of topics that we have to cover. It, it's going to be one of those mini-series that go on for a while, I think, because there's so many topics that we've got to get to. But... But there's a lot of things like this that we just have to accept. Another one, just touching briefly on the jealousy thing. Those of you who, who've read the book, we wrote the book we've done on how to, um, how to do stuff in Japan, we touched on this. It's very normal for you to be with your partner 
and uh, for someone to say to you, wow, your wife is very cute. Uh, some guy, some guy to say to you, your wife is very cute. Or for some girl to say to your wife, hey, your husband's very cool. Um, and that's all very normal. And you have to just be modest about it and go, oh, no, she's all right, you know. But she'll also do the same thing. So some girl says to her, hey, your husband's very cool. It's not uncommon for a Japanese wife to say, oh, no, he's not very cool. He's very uncool. And we hear this all the time. Hear this all the time. Some, some lady's husband or boyfriend does something cool. And we'll say, oh, wow, that's really cool. What a cool thing he did. And she'll say, oh, he's really uncool. He's really annoying. You know, he's not cool at all. He's really annoying. And they say that all the time. And, and when you hear your partner say that, and you quite often hear your partner say things like that because it's part of the Japanese modesty thing. So you'll hear, your, you'll hear other guys telling your partner how cute they are. And you'll, hear, and you'll have other guys tell you how cute your partner is. I had a guy once tell me my wife was really cute. And I know, oh, she's all right, she's all right, because that's the correct answer. If you say, yeah, she is, and there's the other thing, I can't say my wife's really cute, because that's considered immodest and clingy and a bit pathetic. It's not cool, not cool at all. So I can't say, yeah, she's cute, I can't say that. I have, correct answer is, oh, she's all right, you know. Now, that, now he said, he, he, don't, he met her once, this is the first time he'd met her, five minutes later he says, oh, your wife's really cute. And I said, oh, she's all right, she's all right. The next thing he said, a couple of minutes later was, we've got a barbecue next Saturday, can you come? And I said, oh no, I've got to work, I can't come. And he said, what about your wife, can she come? <laughs> right? So five minutes after he tells me my wife's really cute, he's asking if she can come to a barbecue with him that I won't be at. You know, and, and in, like in Australia, you'd go, you, what mate? <laughs> you know, you, what? <laughs> You want my wife to come to you? Fuck off. <laughs> and that'd be, we'd both have a laugh because in Australia, that's just how you'd react to that. That'd be perfectly normal. Here, the correct answer was, oh, mm, I'll ask her. I had to call her over and ask her, there's a barbecue on next Saturday and you know, do you want to come? And she said, oh no, she had another plan so she couldn't come. But all perfectly normal. And if she'd said, yeah, I'm, I'll come. And, and this guy that just told us how cute she was, says oh well I'll come pick you up and I'll take you to the barbecue while your husband's at work and it's all normal all perfectly normal so it's endless it's endless guys I can think of a million examples of stuff like this and other people's things that I've seen uh, girl ladies here with their husbands who flirt really full-on flirting it's an innocent flirting it's not like it is in some cultures quite often the flirting is quite innocent uh, it, but it feels like flirting you know but it's, it's what they do. It's quite often, ladies, if you're, you're in two couples here, quite often the, the lady will be way friendlier to you than they're being to their husband. They're sitting there telling you how uncool their husband is while they're flirting with you, and your partner is telling them how uncool you are while flirting with them, and you can't touch them, you can't, in a lot of countries, if you're sitting there having dinner and hold your, your partner's hand or put your arm around your partner or give them a kiss on the cheek or something, you can't do any of that here because it'll be seen as clingy. And not only will other people think it's not cool, but your partner won't like it because they'll think it's not cool. So, and again, I've got a million examples of that going through my head as well. There's a million examples of that where, you know, people... <laughs> so all this, if you've got any issues with jealousy or <laughs> any sort of insecurities or lack of confidence about any of these things at all, you're going to have to deal with them because... You know, I mean, pretty well in any country you've got to deal with them, haven't you? But here, it's even more so. It's taken to an extreme. And a lot of things about the relationships, because human beings are human beings. So there are a lot of things that we'll talk about. And the same is on the how-to playlist, right? We've got lots of topics on there that we've talked about that aren't exclusive to Japan, of course. As we never say, we've never said anything was exclusive to Japan. But occasionally with these things, they're just taken to a ext more extreme level than they are in some other countries, maybe. You know, and this is probably an example of that. It's probably an example of that. It's just Japanese society, it's how it functions. So this is just what you gotta deal with. So, so you just have to accept it. Don't show any jealousy, just accept it all and be cool. <laughs> Time's up, more videos coming soon.